Okay, this is chapter 14 of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. 14. Did you get all dressed up to come and see me, Sarge? Robbie said, leaning against his front door frame in a green plaid flannel, sh flannel shirt and jeans. Well, Pip had put on her nice jacket today. Not that she was going to tell him that. Nope, I came straight from school. But he was still smiling, eyes glinting like he knew something she didn't. If anything, I dressed down, Pip added. Ah, I see, he said. A plain clothes officer today. Exactly, she said. Speaking of, you're coming with me. Put some shoes on. She clapped her hands. Are we going on a mission? Robbie asked, falling back to slip on some old sneakers discarded in the hallway. Do I need to bring my night vision goggles and utility belt? Not this time. She smiled, starting down the garden path as Robbie closed the front door, then followed her. Where are we going? To a house where two potential Andy Killer suspects grew up, Pip said. One of them just out of prison for aggravated assault. You're my backup since we're going to speak to a potentially violent person of interest. Backup, he said, catching up to walk alongside her. You know, Pip said casually. So there's someone there to hear my screams for help. Wait, Pip. He closed his fingers around her arm and pulled them both to a stop. I don't want you doing something that's actually dangerous. Sal wouldn't have wanted that either. Oh, come on, she shrugged him off. Nothing gets between me and my homework, not even a little danger. He looked unconvinced. I'm kidding. I'm just going to, very calmly, ask her a few questions. Oh, it's a her? Robbie said. Okay, then. Pip swung his backpack and mopped him on the elbow. Hey, she said. Women can be just as dangerous as men. Ouch. Tell me about it, he said, rubbing his arm. What have you got in there, bricks? It sounds like Andy was a piece of work, Robbie said in the car when Pip was done catching him up on everything she'd learned since they last spoke. Everything except the dark figure in the forest and the note in her sleeping bag. This investigation meant everything to him, but she knew he would tell her to stop if he thought she was putting herself in, dan in danger. She couldn't let that happen. And yet, he carried on. It was so easy for everyone to believe Sal was the monster. Whoa, I'm so deep. He turned to her. You can quote me on that in your project. Of course. Footnote in everything, he said. Robbie Singh, he said, drawing his words with his fingers. Deep, unfiltered thoughts. Pip's bug-faced car, 2019. Yes, she glanced quickly at him. Except you didn't use proper referencing style. Oh, the shame, he pretended to wince. And the mechanical voice in her phone's GPS interrupted, announcing they'd reached their destination. Maybe this one, Pip said. Naomi told me it was the one with the blue door. She pulled over to the curb. I called Natalie twice yesterday. The first time she hung up after I said the words school project. The second time she wouldn't pick up at all. Let's hope she'll actually open the door. You coming? I'm not sure, he said, pointing at his own face. There's that whole murderer's brother thing. You might get some more answers if I'm not there. Oh, how about I stand on the path there? He gestured to the slabs of concrete that ran through the yard toward the house to the point where they turned sharply left to lead to the front door. She won't see me, but I'll be right there, ready for action. They stepped out of the car and Ravi handed over her backpack with an exaggerated grunt. She nodded at him when he was in position and then strolled up to the front door. He, she prodded the bell twice, fiddling nervously with the hem of her jacket as a shadowy figure emerged behind the frosted glass. The door opened slowly and a face appeared in the crack. A young woman with white blonde hair cropped closely to her head and eyeliner ringed tight thickly around her eyes. Beneath the makeup, she looked eerily like Andy. Similar big, big blue eyes and plump pale lips. Hi, Pip said. Are you not De Silva? Yes, she said hesitantly. My name's Pip, she swallowed. I was the one who called you yesterday. I'm friends with Naomi Ward. You knew her at school, right? Yeah, Naomi was a friend. Why, is she okay? Nat looked concerned. Oh, she's fine, Pip smiled. She's back home at the moment. I didn't know she was back. Nat opened the door a little wider. Yeah, I should catch up with her sometime. So, sorry for showing up like this, Pip said. She looked down at full length Natalie, noticing an electronic tag buckled around her ankle. So, as I said when I called, I'm doing a school project, and I was wondering if I could ask you some questions. She looked quickly back at Nat's face. What about? Nat shifted the tagged foot behind the door. Um, it's about Auntie Belle. No thanks. Nat stepped back to shut the door, but Pip blocked it with her foot. Please, I know the awful things she did to you, she said. I can understand why you wouldn't want to, but that bitch ruined my life, Nat spat. I'm not wasting one more breath on her. Move. That's when they both heard the sound of rubber skidding across concrete, and he whispered, Oh, crap. 
Nat glanced up and her eyes widened. You, she said quietly, you're Sal's brother. It wasn't a question. Pip turned now, her eyes falling on Ravi behind her, standing sheepishly next to the uneven slab he must have tripped over. Hi, he said, ducking his head and raising his hand. I'm Ravi. He came to stand behind Pip and Nat's grip on the door loosened. She let it swing open. Sal was always nice to me, she said, even when he didn't have to be. The last time I spoke to him, he was offering to give up his lunch breaks to tutor me in Gov because I was struggling. I'm sorry you don't have your brother anymore. Thank you, Robbie said. It must be hard for you, too, not carry it on, her eyes still lost in another world. How much this town worships Andy Bell, Fairview's saint and sweetheart, that bench dedication in the park, taken too soon, not soon enough, it should say. She wasn't... She wasn't a saint, Pip said gently, trying to coax Nat out from behind the door, but Nat wasn't looking at her, only at Robbie. He stepped up. She bullied you? Sure did, Nat laughed bitterly. And she's still ruining my life, even from the grave. You've checked out my hardware. She pointed to her ankle monitor. Got this because I punched one of my sweet mates in college. We were deciding on bedrooms, and this girl started pulling a stunt exactly like Andy would have, and I just lost it. We know about the video she put up of you, Pip said. She should have faced charges over it. You were still a minor at the time. Nat shrugged. At least she was punished in some way that week, some divine providence, thanks to Sal. Did you want her dead after what she'd done to you? Ravi asked. Of course I did, Nat said darkly. Of course I wanted her gone. I skipped two days of school because I was so upset. And when I went back on the Wednesday, everyone was looking at me, laughing at me. I was crying in the corridor, and Andy walked by and called me a slut. I was so angry that I left her a nice little note in her locker. I was too scared to ever say anything to her face, though. Pip glanced sideways at Ravi, at his tense jaw and furrowed brows, and she knew he'd picked up on it, too. A note, he said. Was it a was it a threatening note? No shit, Nat laughed. You stupid bitch, I'm going to kill you. Something like that. So I got there first, though. Maybe he didn't, Pip said. Nat turned and looked Pip in the face. Then she burst into loud and forced laughter, a mist of spit landing on Pip's cheek. Oh, this is too good, she hooted. Are you trying to ask me whether I killed Andy Bell? I had the motive, right? That's what you're thinking? You want my fucking alibi? She laughed cruelly. Pip didn't say anything. Her mouth was filled uncomfortably with saliva, but she didn't swallow. She didn't want to move at all. She felt Robbie brushing against her shoulder, his hand skimming just past hers, disturbing the air around it. Nat leaned toward them. I didn't have any friends left because of Andy Bell. I had no place to be on that Friday. I was home playing Scrabble with my parents and sister-in-law, tucked in by 11. Sorry to disappoint you. And where was your brother? Pip said. If his wife was home with you. He's a suspect too, is he? Her voice darkened. Naomi must have been talking then. He was out drinking with his cop friends that night. He's a police officer, Robbie said. Just finished his training that year, so yeah, no murderers in this house, I'm afraid. Now fuck off and tell Naomi to fuck off too. Nat stepped back and kicked the door shut in their faces. Pip watched the door vibrating in its frame, her eyes so transfixed that it looked for a moment like the very particles of air were rippling. She shook her head and turned to Robbie. Let's go, he said softly. Back in the car, Pip allowed herself to breathe, to just breathe for a few seconds to arrange the haze of her thoughts into actual words. Ravi found his first. Am I in trouble for, while well, literally tripping into the interrogation, I heard raised voices and, no. Pip looked at him and couldn't help but smile. We're lucky you did. She only talked because you were there. He sat up a little straighter in his seat and his air, and his hair brushed against the roof of the car. So the death threat that journalist told you about came from Nat. Pip finished turning the key in the ignition. She pulled out and drove about 20 feet up the road, out of sight of the De Silva house, before dropping, before stopping again and reaching for her phone. What are you doing? Nat said her brother is a police officer. She thumbed on the browser app. Let's look him up. It came up on the first page of results. Daniel De Silva's LinkedIn profile. It said he was an officer at the Fairview Police Department, had been so since the end of 2013. Hey, I know him, Robbie said, leaning over her shoulder. You do? Yeah, back when I started asking questions about Sal, he was the officer that told me not to give up, that my brother was guilty beyond doubt. He was the officer that told me to give up. Stop pawing at me, please. That my brother was guilty beyond doubt. He does not like me. Robbie's hand crept up to the back of his head 
losing his fingers in his dark hair. Last summer, I was sitting at the table outside the cafe by the library. This guy, he gestured to the photo, made me move along, said I was loitering. Funny, he didn't think anyone else was loitering, just the brown kid with the murderer for a brother. When asshole, she said. And if he shut down all your questions about Sal? Robbie nodded. He's been a police officer in Fairview since just before Andy disappeared. Pip stared down at her phone into Daniel's smiling face. Robbie, if someone did frame Sal and make his death look like a suicide, wouldn't it- Stop. Wouldn't it be easier for someone with knowledge of police procedure? That it would, Sarge, he said. And there's the rumor Andy slept with him when she was 15, which she used to blackmail Nat out of the play. Yes, and what if they started up again later, after Danny was married and Andy was a senior? He could be the secret older guy. What about Nat, he said. I sort of want to believe her when she says she was home with her parents that night because she'd lost all her friends, but she's also proven to be violent. He weighed up her hands in a conceptual seesaw, and there's obviously motive. Maybe a brother and sister killer tag team? Or a Nat and Naomi killer tag team, Pip groaned. She did seem pretty angry that Naomi had talked to you, Ravi agreed. What's the word count on this project, Pip? Not enough, Ravi. Not nearly enough. Should we just go and get ice cream and give our brains a rest? He returned that he turned to her with that smile of his. Pip was supposed to go over to Lauren's house later, but she could be a little late, just a little bit. Yes, we probably should. As long as you're a cookie dough kind of gal. Quote, Ravi sang, he said dramatically into an invisible microphone. A thesis on the best ice cream flavor. Pip's car, September. Shut up. Okay. Pippa fits a Moby. 91419. Capstone Project Log Entry 17. I can't find anything on Daniel Da Silva. There's hardly anything to learn from his Facebook profile other than he got married in September 2013 and he really likes barbecues. There's nothing about his professional life online either. Only an article written by Stanley Forbes three years ago about a car collision on Hillside that Daniel responded to. But if he was a secret older guy, Andy could have ruined him in two different ways. She could have told his new wife he was cheating and destroyed his marriage, or she could have filed a police report about statutory rape from two years before. Both circumstances are just rumor at this point, but if true, they certainly would give Daniel a motive for wanting her dead. Andy could have blackmailed him. It's definitely not out of character for her to have been blackmailing a De Silva. If Daniel is what our killer he might have disturbed the investigation somehow in his capacity as a police officer a man on the inside perhaps when searching the bell residence he could have stolen or tampered with any evidence that could lead back to him or his sister it's also worth noting the way he reacted to robbie asking questions about sal did he shut robbie down to protect himself I've looked through all the reports on Andy's disappearance again, staring at pictures of the police searches until it feels like my eyes are about to climb out of their sockets. I found one photo that could be De Silva taken on the Sunday morning. There's an officer walking through Andy's front door, his back annoyingly to the camera, but his hair color and length match De Silva's when I cross-reference social media photos from around that time. It could be him. Onto the list he goes. Purses of interest. Jason Bell, Naomi Ward, secret older guy, Nat Da Silva, Daniel Da Silva. Pippa Fitz Amobi, 91719, Capstone Project Log Entry 18. It's here. The Connecticut State Police have responded to my FOI request. Honey. Dear Miss Fitz Amobi, Freedom of Information Request Reference Number 3142-19. I write in connection with your request for information dated 8 19 received by the Connecticut State Police for the following information. I'm doing a project at school about the Andrea Bell investigation and would like to request the following. 1. A transcript of the interview conducted with Sally Singh on 4 14 2. A transcript of any interviews conducted with Jason Bell. 3. Records of the findings from the searches of the Bell residence on 4 14 and 4 14 I would be very grateful if you could help with any of these requests. Results. Requests 2 and 3 have been refused, citing exemptions under Connecticut General Statutes. Um, a weird looking S. 1-210-B3, records of law enforcement agencies not in the public interest, and Connecticut General Statutes 1 dash 
210B2 files that constitute an invasion of privacy. This email serves as a partial refusal notice under the Connecticut Freedom of Information Act. Request 1 has been upheld, but the document contains redactions as per 1-210B3 and 1-210B2. The transcript is attached below. If you are not satisfied with this response, the attached sheet details the appeals the appeal procedures available to you under the law. Sincerely, Gregory Panett. Everything else was refused, but I have Sal's interview. However, by refusing, they confirmed that Jason Bell was at least interviewed in the investigation. Maybe the police had their suspicions too. The attached transcript. Sally Singh, recorded interview. Date 4-19-2014. Duration 11 minutes. Location interviewee's residence. Conducted by officers from the Connecticut State Police. Police. This interview is being tape recorded. It is the 19th of April 2014 and the time is now 3.55 p.m. My name is Redacted and I'm based at Redacted with the Connecticut State Police. Also present is my colleague Redacted. Could you please state your full name? Oh, uh, sure. Sally Singh. And you can, con and can you confirm your date of birth for me? February 14th, 1996. A Valentine's Day baby, eh? Yeah. So, Sally, let us get some introductory bits out of the way first. Just so you understand, this is a voluntary interview and you are free to stop it or ask us to leave at any time. We are interviewing you in relation to the missing persons inquiry of Andrea Bell as someone who has a close relationship with her. Understand? Yes, yes sir. As we understand it, you are Andrea's boyfriend, correct? Yeah, no one calls her Andrea. She's Andy. Okay, and how long have you and Andy been together? since just before Christmas last year, so around four months. Sorry, do you know anything yet? Do you think she's okay? Well, we cannot rule out that Andy has been the victim of a crime yet. Of course, we hope otherwise. Are you okay? Um, yeah, I'm just worried. That's understandable, Sally. So, the first question I'd like to ask you is, when was the last time you saw Andy? At school, like I said. We talked in the parking lot at the end of the day, and then I walked home, and she was driving home. And at any time up until that Friday afternoon, had Andy ever indicated to you a desire to run away from home? No, never. Did she ever tell you about any problems she was having at home with her family? I mean, yeah, we obviously talked about stuff like that. Never anything major, just normal teenage stuff. I always thought that Andy and redacted. But there wasn't anything recent that would make her want to run away, if that's what you're, what you're asking. No. Can you think of any reason why Andy would want to leave home and not be found? Um, I don't think so. How would you describe your relationship with Andy? What do you mean? Is it a sexual relationship? Um, yeah, sort of. Sort of? I, we haven't actually, you know, gone all the way. You and Andy haven't had sex? No. And would you say your relationship is a healthy one? I don't know. What do you mean? Do you argue often? No, we don't argue. I'm not confrontational, which is why I think we're okay together. And were you arguing in the days before Andy went missing? Um, no, we weren't. So when written statements from Redacted, taken this morning, they both separately alleged that they saw you and Andy arguing at school this week. On the Thursday and the Friday, Redacted claims it's the worst she has seen you both argue since the start of your relationship. Do you know anything about this, Sally? Any truth of it? Um, maybe a bit. Andy can have a temper sometimes. It's not hard. It's hard not to answer back. And can you tell me what you were arguing about in this instance? Um, I don't, I don't know if. No, it's private. No, you don't want to tell me? Um, yeah, no, I don't want to tell you. You may not think it's relevant, but even the smallest detail could help us find her. Um, no, I still can't say. Sure? Yeah. Okay, let's move on then. Did you have any plans to meet up with Andy last night? No, none. I had plans with my friends. Because Redacted said that when Andy left the house at around 10.30 p.m., she presumed Andy was going to see her boyfriend. No, Andy knew I was at my friend's house and I wasn't meeting her. So where were you last night? I was at my friend Redacted's house. Do you want to know times? Yeah, sure. I think I got there around 8.30. My dad dropped me off and I left around 12.15 to walk home. My curfew is 1 a.m., when I'm not staying over somewhere. I think I got in just before one. You can check with my dad, he was up. And who else was with you at Redacted's house? Uh, Sally's uh, whole thing is redacted. And did you have any contact with Andy that evening? 
no, I mean she tried to call me at 9-ish, but I was busy and didn't pick up. I can show you my phone. Redacted. And you have any contact with her at all since she went missing? Since I found out this morning, I've called her like a million times. It keeps going to be a voicemail. I think her phone is off. Okay, and redacted. Did you want to ask? Yeah, so... Yeah, so, Sally, I know you've said you don't know, but where do you think Andy could be? Um, honestly, I think she could just be taking a break somewhere, with her phone off so she can ignore the world for a while. That's what I'm hoping it is. What might Andy need a break from? I don't know. And where do you think she could be taking this break? I don't know. Andy keeps a lot to herself. Maybe she has some friends we don't know about. I don't know. Okay, so is there anything else you might want to add that could help us find Andy? Um... No, um, if I can, I'd like to help in any searches if you're doing them. Redacted. All right, then. I've asked everything we need at the moment. I'm going to end their interview there. It's 4.06 p.m., and, I'm, and I am stopping the tape. Okay, deep breath. I've read it over six times, even out loud, and now I have this horrible, sinking feeling. This does not look great for Sal. I know it's hard to read nuances from a transcript, but Sal was very evasive with the police about what he and Andy were arguing about. I don't think anything is too private that you wouldn't tell the police if it could help find your missing girlfriend. If it was potentially about Andy seeing another man, why didn't Sal just tell the police? It could have led them to the possible real killer right from the start. But what if Sal was covering up something worse? Something that would have given him real motive to kill Andy. We know he's lying elsewhere in this interview, when he tells the police what time he left Max's. It would crush me to have come all this way just to find out that Sal is real really is guilty. Ravi would be devastated. Maybe I should never have started this project, should never have spoken to him. I'm going to have to show him the transcript. I told him I was expecting a reply any day now, but this might hurt him. I don't want to hurt him. Maybe I should lie and say it hasn't arrived. Could Sal really have been guilty all along? Sal is the Sal as the killer has always been the path of least resistance, but it was so easy for everyone to believe but was it so easy for everyone to believe because it's also true? But no, the note. Somebody warned me to stop digging. Yes, the note could have been someone's ideas of a prank, and if it, if the note was a joke, then Sal could be the real killer. But it doesn't feel right. Someone in this town has something to hide, and they're scared because I'm on the right path to chasing them down. I just have to keep chasing, even when the path is resisting me. Persons of interest. Jason Bell, Naomi Ward, Secret Older Guy, Nat Da Silva, Daniel Da Silva.